Ciao a tutti, mi chiamo Charlotte e oggi vi parlo di una canzone che si chiama Non ho l'età. Non ho l'età per amarti. Ok? Uh, allora, conoscete la canzone? Sì? No? Forse no, forse sì. Dipende della vostra età. Hmm. Ok, well, um, this is a song that was... Um, i think it was a winner. I think it was the winner at uh, the 1964 Eurovision Song Contest. And it was sung by a young Italian lady called Giliola Cinquetti. Beautiful young lady. Uh, she kept singing. She's still still around, I think. I think. Um, credo. And uh, the, the words are very, very simple, but very beautiful. Secondo me. Okay, so... Um, This is a video mostly for my, predominantly, for my Italian club members and you're going to get a handout that looks a bit like this later today. We have the lyrics, we have some little exercises, the link to this video, a link to the video where you can watch the, um, the song being sung by the lovely Giuliola. And I've also um, formatted the text of the song, uh, Le Parole, the lyrics, in Italian, um, just so that you can identify, for a start, verbs. So we've got infinitive verbs, we've got conjugated verbs, we've got verbs with pronouns attached to the end. Um, just checking that's in tune. Um, and we also have some, we have indicative verbs, and we have some <gasps> subjunctive verbs, but there's only a couple. sono <laughs> solo due. Okay, so don't worry, there's only two of them. Okay, so um, this is what I thought we'd do. I also have uh, Li Accordi, oh no, questa è un'altra canzone, that's not the same song, but on my solo schermo, um, eccolo, uh, sì, eccolo qua, um, I have the chords, so I thought I would just play the kind of bits of the song. Bear in mind I'm an amateur guitar player. Non ho l'età, non ho l'età per amarti, non ho l'età per uscire sola con te. Now does that sound familiar? So, non ho l'età. Non ho l'età per amarti, non ho l'età per uscire sola con te. Right, so let's have a look at the board. I'll be going between the guitar and the board uh, today. Let's see how this works. I know it's a little overexposed. I have tried amending the light, but we're just going to have to deal with it for now, okay? Okay. Dove la mia pena? Eccolo qua. There's really not much space here, so let's see how we do. Andiamo un po' avanti, così. Così, eccolo. Um, right. Non ho l'età. Non ho l'età. What is that there? We don't need that there. We need a, an apostrophe. And we need a little accent, a grave accent, over the um, E. Let's take this off. I was writing the lyrics last night. Um, stavo scrivendo le parole um, ieri sera. Uh, questo non ho visto. Non ho visto prima questo accento sbagliato. <laughs> so that was a little mistaken accent there. So let's see, what can I do about this? So last time, what I've been doing, if you've been watching my other videos, whenever I've made a little mistake, I've taken a bit of paper on the board and I just put a little bit of glue, a little bit of glue there and I just popped it over over the top of said mistake so it's as if nothing was ever there in the first place. Let's see. Oh, si, perfetto, perfetto. Okay, sorry about that guys. Let's start again. So, non ho l'età. Non ho l'età. Io non ho l'età. So, it's weird from the beginning, isn't it? If you're an English speaker, instead of saying, I am not old enough, I, using the verb uh, to be, 
the equivalent in Italian. The first one that comes to mind is essere. So you don't say sono trent'anni. Mm. You say ho oh, trent'anni. Um, or in my case, ho oh, trentasei anni. Ho oh, ventidue anni, etc. So you use the verb avere, which I think is the same in various other Romance languages. It's the same in French. I think it's tengo plus años in Spanish, so that's quite a common thing. So, non ho l'età is similar. It uses the verb avere. Avere in the first person, present. First person singular in the present tense, ho. Ho, okay? It's not ho, it's ho. Right, and then L apostrophe E-T-A. So, età, with a little uh, grave accent there. Let's put it in black so it's a bit more clear. You find that grave accent over vowels, mostly. Can't think of any other. There might be there might be um, uh, exceptions, but I don't think there are. <clears throat> non credo, credo di no, no. So età, l'età is a feminine noun. It's got an l apostrophe in front of it because it's that's what happens in Italian. When you use the article in front of nouns generally. I'm not old enough, it says. Non ho l'età, non ho l'età, per amarti. It's sad from the beginning. So, I'm not old enough to love you. So, often when you have um, um, an infinitive verb, amare, amare, amare. See, today I just, I just queried whether amare was to love. I know that sounds ridiculous. <laughs> I'm just going to double check because uh, it's been a bit of a funny day already. Si, amare. amare. Amaro. That's what I was thinking. I think it's a word bitter. Right, so, non ho l'età, non ho l'età per amarti. You can see how the mind of a linguist works. You, you question yourself sometimes. You know, you want to be sure. So, um, non ho l'età per amarti. So, what I've done here, I've underlined bits to comment upon. Amare, a nice A-R-E verb, to love. Um, not to be confused with amore, which is a noun, which also features down here. Amore. Amore mio, my love. Um, so amare is the infinitive verb. I'm not old enough to love you for the purpose of loving you. So per... Here is used that preposition per, which normally means for, kind of means for the purpose of or in order to, if you like. It translates that way. Um, if you were saying, for example, I'm here to um, uh, talk to you, so, sono venuta qui or sono qui per parlarti. I am here to talk for the purpose of talking to you. So, I am not old enough for the purpose of loving you, if you like, to love you in English. So, ti here is a little object pronoun which means you. So, as might be obvious, in love songs, when you're ad addressing the person that you love, um, you will use the to form of address. So, you'll see verbs um, talking about the, the you singular. Tu, you'll see verbs conjugated in the two form of various tenses, and you'll also see things like um, amarti or con te, okay, because they refer to the two, um, the two form of you. So, non ho l'età, non ho l'età per amarti, non ho l'età per uscire, another infinitive verb after per, sola con te. So, if this means I'm not old enough to love you, this means I am not old enough to uscire, uscire. That's quite irregular when it's conjugated. But here, um, hmm, how can I get you to remember this? This one here, it means to go out. Let's go out somewhere with you. Let's go out with you. So, um, uscire would be the verb that you use if you're going out. Voglio uscire con le amiche. I want to go out with my friends. <laughs> I want to go out, out. That's the verb, uscire. Okay? It can also literally mean to go out of something, like a house or an air, 
ports or anything really, just when you're going from inside to out. So I'm not old enough to go out. What's this sola? Sola. It's not sole, which is the sun, like in o sole mio. It's not that. Sola is an adjective, so that means alone or on my own or, you know, with you but not with anyone else. So without, um, what do they call it? Uh, chaperone. So sola. Da sola can also mean alone. Um, I'm on my own, that kind of thing. But here, sola agrees with the gender of the person singing the song. And Giulio la Cinquetti is una ragazza, una donna, femminile. So if it was um, a boy singing to a girl who's older, a woman, non ho l'età per uscire solo con te. Okay, but here it's sola. Con te. Con te. Why isn't it con ti or con tu, which you might think? Um, I could tell you why. That's because this here is a stressed pronoun. When you, when you learn Italian and you have conjugations, io, tu, lui, lei, noi, voi, loro, followed by a verb that changes, all those, those little pronouns on the side, they're um, subject pronouns, they can be put in front of a verb, like in English. Um, tu vuoi un caffè? <laughs> Do you want a coffee? But when you have a preposition like, uh, oh, scusa, when you have a preposition like con, which means with, or per, or um, a, which means to, um, it could mean at as well, then you, if you're saying with you, with her, with him, with me, those pronouns change. So you wouldn't say, for example, um, vai con io, <laughs> are you coming with me, con io, it's a bit like saying, are you coming with I, sounds a bit weird really, really. so um, if you've got the preposition con or per or a, etc, those are common ones, then you will change the pronoun to a stressed pronoun, so uh, I'll have to write this in the description of the video, just so that you can find this kind of thing, but um, if you can remember the one for me, then you might remember the one for you in the to form. Okay, so, um, vuoi venire con me? Do you want to come with me? So that's a bit like the English stressed pronoun. So, stressed uh, pronoun. So we've got me and te. Me and te, used with uh, prepositions. Prepositions used with prepositions. In Italian, pronouns often um, can be used in several different ways. So, but if you're looking for stressed pronouns written like that, um, or if you're looking, if you're trying to remember how you say um, with you, with him, with her, with them, after a preposition, remember it changes from io. Uh, tu, uh, lui, lei, they stay the same actually. Um, noi stays the same, voice stays the same. Let me just write them down. So if you're saying with or for, I've bought some flowers for you. Per te. Um, I bought this sandwich for me. Per me. Okay, so we've got me and te. Then we've got lui e lei. So the word for he and she in Italian is also the word for him and her. Lui, per lui. Ho comprato questo per lui. Ho comprato questo per lei. Ho comprato questo per te. Um, so we're using these particular words because they're followed by a preposition. Uh, they're preceded by the preposition per or con or a. So noi and voi. And loro are actually these, these, basically is the first two that change from the subject pronoun. So, um, canto questa canzone per voi. Okay, I'm singing this song for you guys. Um, I'm singing it for him. 
canto per uh, lui. Let's sing for her. Cantiamo per lei. Okay, obviously you can change lui or lei to someone's name. But um, if you're saying for me or come with me, um, I'm going with you, and you're using the two form of uh, you, then it's te instead of tu. Bit confusing, but stress pronouns are what they are, and you often find them after prepositions, but they appear elsewhere, okay? Okay. Non ho l'età, non ho l'età per amarti. What was that tea thing? Why isn't it te or tu? Oh, scusa. Per amarti. Now, what this is, that's an object pronoun, and it it's a direct object pronoun. So let me write that down somewhere. Two. The direct object pronoun um, is uh, direct object pronoun. There's also indirect object pronouns, which many of them look very similar to these object pronouns. So I'll just write that. Uh, me, ti, lo, la. Um, which I have to think then. Chi, vi, li, and le. So, these direct object pronouns here, T means you. So, to love you, to see you, to want you, right? All of those verbs are followed directly by you. So, the you part in English is T in Italian because it's an object pronoun that directly follows the verb amarti. Um, I've got some others on the board which are not quite the same. Volerti, um, etc. However, they differ from indirect object pronouns. Indirect object pronouns don't directly follow a verb. Normally, they have um, in their full form a preposition. So, uh, parlare con te, um, dire qualcosa a te, to say something to you, to speak with you. Uh, to buy something for you. So, direct object pronouns might differ from the ones which are indirect. They differ slightly, some of them are the same. Uh, the third person singular and plural ones change. Um, the reason they're direct is because the verb that you use with them is followed directly by uh, a noun that you're replacing. So, you, um, where was it? Amarti, I'm not old enough to love you. You is the object pronoun. And in Italian, you put the little object pronoun, direct object pronoun, ti, at the end of an infinitive verb. So, just so happens we've got amare plus ti, which becomes amarti. You just get rid of the little e at the end of amare. Okay. Already we're 18 minutes in and we're three lines down, so I think I have to just get on with it, really. Sorry if I'm going on and on, but I love this song and there's a lot of stuff in here which we can always look at later in like another song or another video. Just leave me a comment if you have anything you'd like to look at. So, number two. E non avrei, non avrei nulla da dirti. Oh, look, we've got a little T tacked on to the verb dire. Dire qualcosa a te. So that's actually indirect, but it looks the same as the T up there, and it's tacked onto the end of a, a, a verb, an infinitive verb. Perché, perché tu sai molte più cose di me. Right, that can be sung in a few ways, depending on your interpretation. But avrei e non avrei, non avrei nulla da dirti. Okay, so this is the conditional tense. So I would... It's also in the negative. Non avrei. So all of that there is the conditional uh, th first person singular I. I would not. So we've got the stem here from avere to have. And then we've got the ending which tells you that it's a, um, a conditional. Uh, slightly different from other conditionals, but the E and the I, you will have heard that ending in the um, in the what's it called the phrase <laughs> or in the um, in the conjugation vorrei vorrei un caffè per favore so one of the first things you might have learned um, or might have heard is 
uh, vore, I would like. It actually comes from, so that's the conditional, present conditional. Um, so in English, that kind of translates as I would plus an infinitive verb. So I would go, I would see. If I had my glass, if I had new glasses, I would see better. Um, if I, no, I would like um, a coffee after my lesson. Um, if I had more time, I would like to play guitar more. <laughs> Any of those are conditional tenses, uh, or one of the clauses is conditional. So that EI ending there tells you that it's the present conditional tense, and it's in the EO form. Okay, so here we have non avrei. See that E and the I ending? A, E, E, and an E, A, A. Okay, that's how you pronounce it. So she's saying, I'm not old enough, I'm not old enough to love you. Um, I'm not old enough to go out on my own with you, or go out alone with you. And I would not, I would not, right, so this double negative in Italian doesn't sound awkward like it would in English. This is what it means. And I would not, I would not have anything, in English we'd say, I have nothing, I would have nothing. We've got non avrei nulla. So those, that non in front of avrei makes it I would not. And then nulla means like nothing. You might have heard niente as well. Niente. Okay, so nulla just means nothing or any, I would not have anything. In English we use not and anything two negatives, but we can also use the affirmative, I have plus nothing. And I would have nothing to say to you. That's sad, isn't it? I mean, this person, she's just young, she's just young. This reminds me of a song in English, uh, an American song actually, um, Born Too Late. That's a lovely song too, but there's the same kind of um, sentiment. You know, I'm not old enough to go out with you. I love you, but I can't go out with you because I'm too young and you'd think I'm stupid. So, you know, that kind of thing. And non avrei, non avrei nulla da dirti perché tu sai molte più cose di me. Okay, what's all this about? What are all these lines? So, let's move the mic up. Um, okay. I would have nothing to say to you perché. This can mean two things in Italian. Here it means because. It links two sort of clauses. I would have nothing to say to you because you, look, there's tu, that's the subject pronoun, that's normally when it's used, it's followed by a verb, as it is here. Perché tu sai, from the verb sapere, you know, molte, that looks a bit like molto. Okay, so molto, when it precedes a noun, a plural noun, um, changes, the ending changes. So instead of meaning um, uh, very, it sort of means a lot. Okay, so instead of you are very kind, say molto gentile, molto used with an adjective like gentile um, doesn't change. The adjective would change. Um, for example, sono. I'm trying to think of an example of an adjective that doesn't end with e, because if it ends with e, it doesn't it doesn't change in the singular. Uh, okay, oh no, that, that's okay. Al alto. <laughs> è molto alto. È molto alta. Depending on what you're talking about, alto, alta, basso, bassa. But here we've got molto, which doesn't proceed an adjective, it precedes a noun, and it's a plural noun, cose, things, una cosa, a thing, che cosa, what thing, cose, things. So, molte, the ending agrees with the feminine plural e at the end of cose, and the pronunciation changes. Perché tu sai molte più cose di me. So we have a comparative here. You know more things than I do. You know more più... So forget about molte. We've got più cose, more things. 
than me. So the here is used with più um, to mean more things than me. Oh look, and we have me again, which is um, the same kind of thing as te. And it's used instead of io, which means I, it's used um, as a, uh, a stressed pronoun. Okay, so you'll see it comes after the preposition di. So it's really useful looking at songs like this and understanding, oh right, so we've got ti, te and tu. <laughs> they all mean you. This one goes in front of a verb, like in English when you say you are lovely. I am going. I and you go in front of verbs. Here we've got te and me after a preposition. They still mean you, with you. Di te would be of you, but here it's di me, which is of me, or than me. And then we've got ti and ti, which even though they have two different, slightly different functions, they're both object pronouns and they are tacked onto the end of infinitive verbs. Um, and again, they mean you. Okay, in English we just have the word you for here, here, and here. A bit easier, therefore, for people learning English. They don't have to learn like several different pronouns when they, they mean you. And remember, we also don't have the uh, the formal form of address, and we don't have the plural you. So that's a lot more stuff that you have to learn in Italian. But you can figure it out through things like song. Okay, so. I'm not old enough. I'm not old enough to love you. I'm not old enough to go out alone with you. Um, and I would not, I wouldn't have anything to say to you because you know many or so many more things than me. Bless. Let's go down to this bit here. I couldn't quite decide whether it's the, um, I guess, I guess it is the chorus. Um, Lascia che io viva un amore romantico nell'attesa che venga quel giorno ma ora no Okay, what's that all about? Lascia che io viva un amore romantico Lascia che means let, okay? Um, lasciare is to like to let go of someone's hand, leave someone alone Lascia me in pace, leave me in peace. <laughs> Lasciare, okay? Not to leave from a place, like to depart, that would be partire, but to leave someone in peace or to leave something on the table or, okay? Lascia che io viva. Lascia che io viva. Now, this means basically, let me read the whole thing. Lascia che io viva un amore ro romantico. Allow or let. Let a romantic love come to life. Bit flowery, right? So, um, nella tesa che venga quel giorno, ma ora no. So, this is lascia che is actually followed here and here. The two verbs that follow it, they're in the present subjunctive. So, it's, it doesn't really exist in the same way in, in English, but when you have phrases that, um, certain phrases that have che, penso che, credo che, there's an element of uncertainty or doubt. Okay, you're not quite sure that something is going to take place. So think of the song Let It Be. It's a little bit like that. Um, so, let, lascio che io viva. Oh, okay, so lascio che io viva allow me to live, let me, let it be that I live a romantic love in the weight um, that, um, that this day or that day will come, but now, no. So basically she's saying something along the lines of, um, please let it be that I experience a romantic love, um, but in the, in the wait that that day happens, but now is not the time. So it's a really sad little bit here. This is a longing. Um, she's talking about something that may actually never take place. So here we've got viva and venga instead of vivo, which would be the present um, indicative, vivo. 
And here we've got Venga, which reminds me of the song Venga Bus, but it's not the same one, because uh, I think that's Spanish. So Venga comes from Venire, uh, which would be Venga, Viene. So this is an example of something that looks quite poetic, but is quite typical in Italian. So we've got, um, in the wait that arrives that day, in, in the wait whilst I wait for that day to arrive, we'd probably translate it back into English or something like that. Allow me to live a romantic love um, whilst waiting for that day to arrive. It doesn't sound quite finished, does it? But at the moment, no. But now is not the time. Um, so quel giorno is, the verb here venga, is the third person singular in the subjunctive. The reason it's in the subjunctive it's just a slight change in the spelling. Sometimes it's quite a different change, but it's there because, and this is there because, it follows la choque, which is a hope, uh, something that's uncertain. It's like a plea to the gods, if you like, or to fate. But some, please let it be. It's almost like a prayer. So because of that, these are the present subjunctive. So here we've got un amore. Remember, amare is the verb to love, but un amore is the noun, love. You could call someone un amore, se un amore, se un tesoro, you're a darling, you're a love. Um, if you were to say my love, my love, right? If you're a guy, you're a masculine, well, you don't have to be a guy these days, you can be whatever you like, it doesn't matter to me at all, as long as you're happy. But if you have a girlfriend uh, who is, that you're calling my love, you would still call her amore mio. Now, if you've learned about mio, mia, etc., you know that nouns have genders and sometimes you have to agree nouns and um, adjectives, sorry, with the gender of a noun or a person. So it seems a little bit strange to say amore mio to a girl, right? Because you think, well, it's a girl, shouldn't it be amore mia? No, because mio is the possessive pronoun, possessive adjective, I think, which agrees with amore. It's an, a masculine singular noun. So um, don't worry if you hear amore mio or if you say it to someone or something similar, um, tesoro mio, my treasure, my darling. Um, because the word itself, love or treasure, is masculine, then mio agrees in the masculine singular, even if you're talking to or being told this as a girl. Okay, so let's have a think how that goes. We've got 33 minutes in. Actually, let's look at the last bit of the um, music. Of the lyrics, sorry. Uh, let's go down a little bit. I'm going to have to crouch down like this now. Uh, so, what happens is we have this first, um, not a chorus, what do we call it? A verse. Uh, and then we have uh, a second verse here with the same uh, melody, melodia. And then we have this chorus. And then we have, I think, the first verse again, again non ho l'età. Non ho l'età per amarti, non ho l'età per uscire solo con te, e non avrei, non avrei nulla da dirti, perché tu sai molte più cose di me. So that's repeating what I've already seen. Lascia che io viva un amore romantico, nell'attesa che venga quel giorno, ma ora no. Okay, I'll wait for that day, it might happen, but maybe not now. And then we have a repetition of the first verse. Then we have a slightly different kind of chorus bit. It's the same as this. Oh no, it's not. Scusa. So what happens here is we've got the set, essentially, that's the chorus and we've got two verses, one after the other. So this isn't, sorry, scusa, scusa. This is the verse melody. Se tu vorrai, se tu vorrai aspettarmi, quel giorno avrai tutto il mio amore per te. 
Right, so this has actually got lots of repetition. So then it's got Lasha Kiel Viva again, the chorus, and then it's got two verses. So now I've looked at it on here, I can see we've got two verses chorus, two verses with the second of the two verses slightly different. Then we have the chorus, and then we have the first verse, and then we have this, the last different one. So quite a typical structure for a song, really. Um, let's have a look at this. Se tu vorai. Okay, so we've got an if. Se tu vorai. If you, right, that's a subject pronoun, you, vorai. Now, what does that come from? It looks a little bit like vorai, doesn't it, actually? Vorai. Uh, scusa, ecco la. Vorai. Vorai. So, an A and an I makes an A sound, an E and an I makes an an A and an I, like this. Let's zoom in so you can follow my ramblings. Very rambly today. I'm just excited to have a bit of time to actually do some work. So, A, I, 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 Vorai. <laughs> so an A and an E sound becomes I. And an E and an E becomes A. So Vorai. I would like, I would like, conditional present, I form, vorai, that's the to form because it comes after the to, but it's the same verb, volere, this is the future tense, if you will want, if you will want, um, now that doesn't sound very, it doesn't sound sort of uh, fluent in English, but one way that you might say in English is um, if ever you want or, if, or just the present tense sort of sound if you want if you want to wait for me that's what the rest of the sentence says um, one day you will have my love for yourself that's basically what it says let's have a look how it's formed in Italian though we've got se tu vorrai future tense of volere, it's got this irregular stem, double R instead of the L. Se tu vorrai, we've got the repetition there, I guess that denotes longing, um, but also it's obviously for, like, to fit the melody. Aspetarmi, look at that, Aspe it's a bit like aspate, aspartame, 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 I'm sure there's a drug called aspartame something like that, I think it's for ADHD. It's a little bit like that, <laughs> a bit off topic, but it does sound like that. Aspetar me. It's got an I, an M and an I at the end. That's like amarti. Oh, excuse me. I have to zoom out again now. That's like amarti and dirti and where's the other one? Oh, it must be that one. Aspetar me. So aspetar me is to wait for me. If you want to wait for me. So me at the end here is an indirect object pronoun which replaces per me. Okay, but it's placed at the end. Aspetar me. So if you will, in the in Italian it's the future tense. Here, here and here. We've got three future tenses which in English we would say, if you want, if you want to wait for me, that day you will have all my love, il mio amore, because the word love is masculine singular, all of my love, so, tutto il mio amore, so, all of my love, tutto here means all of, or all, we could say either, all my love. Oh my love, <laughs> another great song. Um, tutto il mio amore. So if you are having um, all my pizza, if you would like, if you'd like, that day you can have all my pizza, <laughs> all to yourself. All you would change here is tutta la mia pizza. I know it sounds ridiculous, but it's a bit like... Um, Molto and molti, molta, molte. Tutto, tutta, tutte, tutti. Okay? Um, it means all of something. 
So um, that can change depending on the noun that follows it, and, and the il and mio might change to la and mia if it was an, a feminine noun. Now remember, some nouns end with an e, like that. It's singular, but it's got an e on the end, so it looks like it might be a feminine plural. Donna, donne, ragazza, ragazze. Why is it amore? But it's a singular masculine noun. It's just irregular. So there's other um, nouns that are called loads. There are nouns and there's also uh, adjectives that end with e in the singular. And they, they actually work in your favour when you get used to them, but they can stump you at first. So, um, before I get too off track, amore is one of them. Ristorante is another one. So these are two nouns. L'amore, L apostrophe, il ristorante. They're both masculine, though. You just have to know that they're masculine. Any adjectives or, uh, like for example, il mio, um, il mio amore, il mio ristorante, they will depend on the gender of the noun. So, you, so there's two examples of nouns that end in il. Just while we're on it, uh, hmm. here's a few adjectives that end with an E. Gentile, grande, great or big. Or. So these are adjectives. adjectives. So you'll notice if you're part of my club that I put these little bracketed bits of information after words sometimes. Um, masculine, masculine. Sometimes it will be noun, masculine. Sometimes it will have an S for singular, PL for plural, O, B for object, pronoun, P, R, O, N. So um, you'll find those like little abbreviations in dictionaries, glossaries, online kind of forums for for, for uh, language discussions. You know, they're really useful, especially if you're sort of beginner or intermediate but really interested in how the language functions. Knowing that kind of stuff will help you find patterns in the language. Um, and that, again, is one thing that's really useful about songs. So, if you will like, if you would like to wait for me, uh, that day you will have, so that's the verb avere, um, all of my love for you. Per te, per in front of te, um, because that's a preposition and that wouldn't be per tu. It would have to be the stressed pronoun. Right then, hmm, not sure whether I should uh, go about getting my guitar to do a little rendition of the whole thing, but I think I might do that separately. Um, I would say definitely check this song out. It's full of lots of lovely things. Um, it's very simple. It's quite easy to understand. Um, there's a lovely, it's a lovely bit of kind of like pop culture, Italian, Euro European pop culture, to watch the video. So whether you're um, a club member or not, I would I would say go and find Giliola Cinquetti, and I'll just write her name down because it's kind of hard to, to know how to say. So um, I might just play out the video with a little bit of the song. So let's see, Giliola, G and an I is a G sound. Uh, G L I Li Li G Li O La G Liola Okay G Liola and then Cinque T A bit like Cinque 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 T Okay, Giuliola Cinquetti, and just because I get paranoid sometimes, I'm going to double check that I've got that right by looking at the name on my chord. See, sì, Giuliola Cinquetti. Okay, let's see if I can play a little bit. Right, so guys, hopefully you found that useful. We've looked at um, verbs in the present, in the conditional present, present conditional, and a few in the future. We've seen. Um, object pronouns tacked on to the end of an infinitive verb. Um, we've seen um, how molto changes if it's followed by a, uh, a noun, a plural noun. 
Um, and we've seen some sub present subjunctive after la chaque. And we've seen <coughs> stressed pronouns me and te, which follow prepositions like per, con, and di or a. And um, hmm, what else? And some adjectives. There's only one or two, I think. Sola, um, alone. Um, oh, and also that when you're talking about age, um, whether you're saying I have, I am so many years old, or I am older, you would use avere instead of essere, which might be what you use in your own language. Let's see then. Crikey, this video is quite long. It's quite long. Okay. I'll just play a little bit and then uh, I'll try and record this at some point. I don't think I've done it before. And then I'll post it on my YouTube channel. This is what happens when you wear glasses, so you get red marks on your nose. Non ho l'età. Non ho l'età. Oh, I'm not, I'm not looking at the thing. I need the chords. Na, 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 na. Non ho l'età. Solo con te e non avrei, non avrei nulla da dirti perché tu sai molte più cose di me. I'm going to leave it there, okay, on that note of longing, um, because the next bit goes up more or less an octave. I'll see you again. Grazie mille e alla prossima volta. Ciao.